Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. What is normal now but won't be in 25 years? Hopefully family vloggers. I hope that Ryan's world kid sues the shit out of his parents. I'm sure years from now we will find him a broken adult. Both financially and spirituality. We're slowly seeing paperwork die out in hospitals as nurses. I often think about down the line when employees will think it's crazy I worked when they still use paper. Everything is online now. I've had the opposite experience at pregnancy appointments. I'll fill everything out online and they still make me fill out seven pages of the same info in person. That shit drives me insane. I have one healthcare provider who requires paperwork online, then calls you before your appointment to ask you the same questions, and then you answer the same questions a third time when you actually have your appointment. Ata, yes, I understand why this is done, and that doesn't make it any less annoying. You don't need to keep repeating the info to me. Possibly posting very personal details of your life on social media. I swear to God, using social media as it is used right now will probably be looked at like smoking tobacco is right now. Definitely. I've already seen posts from younger users saying, my parents posted my whole childhood online and I absolutely hate it. Well I hope so. Kind of weird. When I was in middle school, early 2000s, I remember being hammered in my head how dangerous sharing personal information was, and everyone was afraid of doing anything like that. Then social media got popular and everything went out the window. Yeah I, old, remember the days of homepages, be careful what information you post. Fast forward to now, your wedding party. Post that damn thing online for 3 billion users. The more the better. I hope it will be single-use plastic. Yes, but find a better alternative for paper straws. Especially because those fucking straws are worse for us than the plastic. Riddle me that Batman. 56,754 different streaming services which amount to more than anyone ever paid for cable. I dunno, my parents still have cable. I don't know if there are enough streaming services out there to match that bill. Last month my Phil told me he was looking into ditching the TV portion of his cable subscription and going all broadcast because it was too expensive. Oh, how much is it? I asked. $150, he said. For all of it? Nope, $150 just for the TV service, and they're on the minimum a la carte package with two DVRs. After my brain finished rebooting he and I discussed the prospects of cord cutting. The short version is that for the equivalent of two months of cable TV bills he was able to pick up a kick-ass antenna and a quad tuner HD home run tuner box which gets him more channels than he was paying for monthly, only now he's not paying monthly. Admittedly the channel quality is a bit, different, I will say that, but cable is still ridiculously priced. Broccoli head haircuts, people are totally going to look back at them and laugh or cringe. There has not been a single generation since the dawn of time that hasn't looked back on the teenage haircut and cringed. I grew up in the emo hair era, I'm not about to laugh at today's kids for their broccoli hair. The current shit of an education system. Yes, it will be much worse by then. Yeah, at least now it's free. They're working on making you pay for it though. It needs to be drastically overhauled. No child left behind was well-meaning, but has created a nightmare environment for everyone involved in public education. My wife teaches at a middle school, and there are basically zero consequences for students when it comes to failing to turn in work, failing courses entirely, or even failing to show up regularly. Any standards teachers attempt to set are essentially unenforceable because the hands of administrators are tied by the school corporations, who only care about maintaining enrollment levels in order to secure funding. Hell, there are barely any consequences when students become violent towards teachers or other students, and if it's one of the many children that have a behavioral IEP, you can change that, barely, too, never. Don't even get me started on the utter nonsense that most IEPs are. Basically, the only recourse that my wife has with her problematic students is to get their parents involved, but half the time they either don't care or automatically take their child's side and accuse my wife, who has yet again been nominated for Teacher of the Year in her district this year, of being an inadequate teacher via nasty emails in which they demonstrate more often than not that they're an adult who doesn't understand the difference between your, and, your, or, their, and, their. Single quote. The icing on the cake is that after 12 years of teaching, she still doesn't even make $50,000 a year. It's very difficult to understand why anyone would want to go into teaching at this point. My wife teaches fourth grade and I hear her talking to parents regularly. She offers to buy flashcards so the parents can work with their kids at home, and gets told that teaching is her job, and if she can't teach their kid, she needs to find a different job. Every beginning of the school year, we spend between $1,000 and $1,500 for school supplies for her students because the kids will inevitably show up with no school supplies. 
They will have Jordans and the latest iPhone, but their parents can't afford school supplies. Where I live, snow. On the 1st of January 2024 outside temperature was 16 degrees Celsius and snowed one week whole, winter, Europe 800 meters above sea level. When I was a kid I used to routinely play in 2 to 3 feet of snow from one storm where I live. Now we're lucky if we get that throughout the entire winter. Live in a northern Chicago suburb, and since November, we have been under more tornado warnings than winter storm warnings. Ordering food and drink from a human in a drive through there was a drive through I went to last year where the order was taken over the speaker by a bot. It actually did a better job than most people who take orders and ask me if I wanted to add bacon. The girl at Wendy's was too stoned the other day to understand that I wanted a large drink and a medium fry. It was adorable, but also I have places to be, and I don't know how many different ways to explain, medium fry, large soda. Single quote. I think a lot of fast food is going away anyway. It is too expensive now, and they have cut the staffing so much that it is also no longer fast. I had a three-item order at Del Taco take 20 minutes yesterday. It's like, what's the fucking point? Fax machine in offices. Ha, huh, that's what they said 25 years ago. They make sending signed invoices easy, I think they'll stick around for a while more. And for privacy reasons, HIPAA reasons, doctor's offices have to use them, so that's not going anywhere. Affordable college. Most degrees don't need students to be in a brick and mortar building, I hope in 25 years the cost of college is significantly cut down. I had a fiducuary seriously suggest that I should be putting in $800 per mo for each kid so that they will have enough for college. I have two kids, so $1,600 per mo. That is fucking insane. I'll save what I reasonably can but overall my wife and I came to two different conclusions. Cost of college is just going to keep going up as it is. We will pay for what we reasonably can, if they go to college but unfortunately they will need to pay via loans, working, other methods. I don't want to be a parent that says, my kids must major in STEM, but I will be strongly pushing for it to make any significant cost more worth it for them. There will be some reform that will make it more affordable, which is laughable to think would ever happen in the US. So basically we have to hope for some reform which is never gonna happen to, afford, college. Because if I had an easy $1,600 a month to put away I'd weigh more of my own debt paid off. We didn't push our kid to STEM, but we were honest with him his whole life about how challenging our non-STEM degrees made getting work and getting paid enough to get by. We got him games that helped build foundations for coding. We played Kerbal with him, we got him bot kits, and let him disassemble his toys when they got worn out and repurpose parts into new things. He's now in a math and science high school and likely to go into aviation or a similar field, and he's pretty excited. We wanted him to have more opportunities than us, so we tried to encourage him through fun things into feeling confident about his capabilities. If he'd had more trouble with math or if he'd really seemed to not enjoy the things we shared, we would have tailored our encouragements to what he liked more, still with a goal of helping him develop skills that would help him survive in modern reality. He's turning out to be a bit of a gearhead, and he's as interested in the guts of the cars as their speed or reputations. But he also loves history, is fluent in French, and keeps a sketchbook like his artsy dad. We also told him that he can always minor in any liberal art he wants, because it's good to be well-rounded, and part of the point of college is to give people exposure to new ideas. It'll probably be French, though, since he's so good at it. The sad, glaciers and snow during winter. The good, single-use plastic and five-day work week. The pessimistic, civilization. The optimistic, nuclear threat. Four-day work weeks are only coming for the cushier jobs. It's going to take one hell of a rise in unionization to see the general labor pool get healthy work-life balances. Hopefully workplace abuse. Biceps fuck blind following in the workplace, especially unethical or common sense or moral actions. Not as long as healthcare and the human dignity of healthcare is tied to one's employer. Spot on. It's all about making employees be in a position where employers have to compete for good labor. If the states and Fed make it so welfare eligibility is cut off only when a household has net gains of $9,500 per year, that's the ACA maximum out-of-pocket expense for insurance plans, employers will be forced to compete for good labor. That would force culture shifts. Tons of workers would have affordable insurance. Edit, the cutoff is based on avoiding hardships caused by Maslow's bottom level on the pyramid. That's existential needs. Food, heat, medicine, shelter, etc. If society's leaders prevent you from securing these without going into hardship, then society is taking away basic human dignity. Single-family homes in major cities owned by the middle class. I can see a potential future where a majority of people have to rent because corporations have bought up most housing. 
and those who don't rent are either in the top 1% or have pulled their heads from their ass and live in multi-generation houses. Look at this guy describing the present and acting like he has a crystal ball. Young adults having the ability to read and write. Gen Z is functional, but Gen A seems to be severely behind in their academics and they don't care. The education gap that occurred during the pandemic is serious and bad. Teachers across disciplines see it, kids are legitimately two years, or more, behind previous milestones. In my opinion, it's worse to pretend that's not a problem than it is to slow things up and address it. Some seem to want to treat it as irrelevant because kids that were already higher performing aren't as badly hit. Carrying on as if nothing's different is doing a disservice not only to those kids but to society. Edit, clarity of thought. Parents need to step the fuck up. Like you gotta teach shit at home if your kid's not responding well to school. Can't just let them flunk their way into adulthood it's depressing. As an older Gen Z, I'm really thankful that my early grade school education was before you had a device that could answer all of your questions. Mental math and memorization was a big part of my education. I even had to learn cursive, even if it was completely ignored after elementary school. I got, the old doctrine, with tech still being a big part of my education. It seems like the students even a few grades after me had their education completely revamped to be entirely tech-focused. In my district, they even stopped doing multiplication tables, because you'll always have a calculator in a post-smartphone world. I'm a Gen Z, born in the late 2000s. I read a lot, probably too much for my own good, and prefer to have my nose in a book than being on my phone. I've expanded my vocabulary quite a bit because of how much I read, and it is mind-blowing to me how many general alpha just don't care. Hell, most students in my high school can't even spell school right. It baffles me why most of my classmates don't like to read and learn. Keep it up man. Here's hoping Gen A turns it around. I'm a millennial parent of a general A, so I'm just trying to model these good behaviors to my kid. I read daily, I study mathematics textbooks, I practice art and engage in weightlifting, cardio five days a week. I only learned these things very late in life, but it was because these behaviors weren't modeled for me. It's not just Gen A's fault. We're failing them. 